Everybody good? Is it roll? All right. All right, good afternoon. So uh, I'm going to start with prayers and, you know, praying for the family. And I know a lot of times people say, oh, you always say about praying. Well, if there wasn't evil in this world, we wouldn't have to pray as much. And uh, when I talk about this story today, you're going to hear about evil. Uh, you're going to hear of a complex investigation, and you're going to hear about an investigation that's still ongoing. So unfortunately, there's a lot of things we won't be able to answer. But I can tell you, um, you know, it is a difficult case, and this will be an ongoing case. And there's a lot of things that we still have to run down and a lot of things that we still have to solve. So, um, you know, I'm talking about Philip Zilliot, he's 25 years of age, Rain Mancini, 26 years of age, and their two children, Philip Zilliot III, who's five years old, and Karma Zilliot, who's six years old. And for them and their families, we, we ask for tons of prayers because this is an extremely difficult time for all of them. Uh, the preliminary investigation has said it, it's a complex, and this is still a missing persons case. Uh, until the final resolution, until the ME comes back, um, it's still a missing persons case, but we were able to, I, to find human remains at the crime scene, and we believe it may be this family, but at the same time as I can't give a definitive until everything is, the ME gives us that final um, conf confirmation that it is. You know, I want to thank the members of the Sheriff's Office. Uh, with me, the numerous members, but I want to point out, which we will speak, is Sergeant Rosa from Major Crimes, uh, Deanna Higgins, Huggins, sorry, apologize, Deanna, Deanna. Um, she's the lead instructor for Human Remain Dogs, and uh, Indy was out there with her, and so they were critical into this investigation. And Austin Polonitsa, he does the anthropology and forensics piece for us, and they get called out, those two get called out a lot to go to different organizations, and this is a case that we need them right here in our own neighborhood to help solve this case. Um, we're working with the state attorney's office right now. Uh, because of that partnership with the state attorney's office, we're able to charge Rory Atwood with first degree homicide on John Doe. And it's on John Doe because we do not know exactly uh, the human remains that we found. But because of the statements he made, because of the information we've gathered, he's being charged with first degree homicide. You know, I want to thank the information that has come in. And I'm going to get into it. It's pretty complex how this information came in. And the great job of our detectives and our deputies, Deputy Callahan, uh, their team out there were nonstop with whatever nuggets we got, they kept going with it. The other part, too, is, you know, we still need the public's assistance. Call us. Don't call a friend who calls a friend who calls a friend, and that's what I'm going to talk about. That's what hinders the investigation. What helps us is if you call us directly to get that information. So this started on Wednesday evening at approximately 11.30 p.m. Rain Mancini, uh, her friend picked her up at Rain's, house, at Rain's mother's house, uh, drove her to Rory's house, which is on Nottingham Trail in Hudson. This was the last time that Rain saw her mother and the mother saw her, uh, which was unusual, as we'll find out later on in the investigation. Rain's friend, Rain's friend, Rain, Philip, and Rory uh, were all at the house together with Rain and Philip's two children, who I mentioned, and Rory's daughter, who is a juvenile as well, were all at the house while the adults were drinking. Uh, Philip and her son, Philip uh, Zilliot, and this is around midnight on Thursday, and her son, Philip's mother, and her son, Philip, spoke on the phone. And that was the last time they spoke on the phone. Uh, per Rain's friend, Rain, Philip, and Rory were all drinking alcohol, and they started arguing. Before leaving, Rain's friend hears someone say, this is the last time this happened, you pulled a gun on us, referring to Rory. We do not have any police reports about that. A friend of Rory, this is around 2 o'clock in the morning, got a call from Rory, who was really upset and said he shot somebody and was frantic. That friend, you know, then calls another friend who calls another friend, and we think possibly a fourth friend. None of the information came to us for another 12 hours. Uh, the sheriff's office didn't get any of that information, and it would have been very helpful for the investigation had we received it. Uh, Rory, this is about 3 a.m. in the morning. Rory Atwood then calls his baby's mother and says, hey, I want to drop off our daughter. And that doesn't happen until about 5.45 in the morning, he drops her off. This is about Thursday at approximately 2 in the afternoon. This is the first time that we, the Pasco Sheriff's Office, get information. We received third and possibly fourth party information that the suspect may have killed somebody. That's what I go back to. It was a person after a person after a person. Uh, this is when we begin our investigation efforts, trying to track back the real source of the information. Uh, we went around the property. 
The suspect gave us permission to walk around. Unfortunately, we did not find anything that was suspicious at the time. On Friday, we were able to make contact with Rain and Phil's family. So it wasn't until yesterday afternoon that we were able to make contact with the family, and they said they had not heard from them. It was unusual in the fact that they hadn't heard from them. and wasn't unusual in the fact that this family is a little transient, and they go from place to place. So around 4.30 in the afternoon, our deputies um, observe Rory Atwood. We see him out there. He gives us, he gives us permission to go back on their, on their property, which we start doing a more extensive search. We had the human remain dogs, bloodhounds, aviation, deputies. Uh, because of the search, we were able to find human remains. Uh, this, along with several admissions, is what led to Rory Atwood being charged with first-degree homicide. As I go back to it, it's an ongoing investigation. Apologize. Our job is to work with the medical examiner right now to help identify the remains. The missing person case will remain open until everyone is identified. We are still tracking down leads, and we will provide updates when they're significant at the time. I go back to this one thing. We need the public's assistance. We do not know who those human remains are at this time. It's an active investigation. We're going to figure it out. But at the same time is talking to our detectives, the missing person case is not over. That missing person case will not be over until we know where those four individuals are. And I go back to it, those two poor little children. It's heartbreaking. They, we, we believe they, that they may be on the property deceased, but we do not know that definitively. And we will do everything we can to track them down. We pray to God they're alive somewhere, but at the same time as for that family, we need to find closure and we need to find justice. So with that being said, anything I can answer? So there's one, you found one body? Um, so as of right now, I can tell you we found human remains. We can't identify how many bodies were found out there right now. Uh, we're still trying to uh, work with the ME and get some forensics to figure out. Yeah. What state were they in when you found them? Um, it's part of the investigation. I can't go into it, but I can just tell you they were human remains. I see. Yeah. And then can you explain, sorry, there's a lot of names, and I know some of them have the same name. So can you explain who reported them missing and when? So the first call came in that some, he may have shot somebody. That was Thursday. Friday wasn't really until we got hold of the family. It was Friday when we were able to talk to the family, and they said, hey, look, we don't know, like, we haven't heard from them. At that point, we were just going, okay. We were ramping it up since Thursday, late afternoon, but really when the family said we haven't heard from them, then we, were, then we you know, said, okay, there's, these pieces aren't falling together. The hard part was, it was, as confusing it is for us, our detectives, and I go back to Deputy Callahan, his name keeps coming up for us because he was the one that was like, I'm gonna keep figuring out, I'm gonna keep finding out who did this. So it sounds like it was unusual that you learned about the suspect before you actually learned about the people who were missing? Yes. Okay. Yep, absolutely. That was the whole thing. It was that we found out that the suspect stated to his friends, I may have shot somebody, or I did, and then we're trying to backtrack as to who may have been. Can you talk about any idea about what happened here, if, you know, you know why this happened? Or the, There was supposedly an argument. They had lived together for a little bit. There was an argument before, as you've heard, that somebody said that she had heard. Rory said, or, you know, they pulled a gun on me last time. So it has to do with them living situation. We don't know exactly what it was, but that's why we're still interviewing, investigating, and trying to find this all together. And then could you say who, who owned the property where, the, where they were found? I don't know exactly who owns it, but I believe Rory was the one who was living in primary residency, but I don't know exactly who actually owns it. Do you think there's more people out there who, who know more about what happened? Um, I believe there's definitely people who have information because it sounded like People were calling, people were calling, people. It was sound like a train of like, but nobody called law enforcement. So that's the frustration on our side is that we're asking anybody who got a phone call or knows something, please let us know. Can you tell us anything more about this family and more about their background at all? All I know is that unfortunately their, their living situations were never the best. They were transient, going from one place to another. And so they had stayed at Roy's for a while. And so something happened, argument came out of this one too. All right. No, nope, absolutely. We're working with FDLE, and we're sending a lot of equipment out there to go search. So this is still an active. Oh, this is this is going to be off for a while. So, 
All right. I just want to, can you talk about the search and, and kind of what's next? Go ahead. Rosa, you want to get into that? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Rosa, ROSA. I'm a sergeant at the Pasco Sheriff's Office Homicide Unit. Um, our search is going to continue of the property. We're, we have a lot more investigative things to do, looking at the property, looking at the home itself, and it's approximately 10 acres there, so a lot of ground to cover. We have a lot of resources that we're going to use. Uh, a lot of agencies are going to assist us as well, including the medical examiner's office. And we have a lot of investigations still due to identify um, who's there, how many people are there, that kind of type, type of things. And we believe that our suspect, uh, Rory Atwood, may have spoken to more people about this incident. So there's anybody out there that he spoke to, please contact the sheriff's office. Will you guys be doing a lot of digging around the property? What kind of tools are you using? So I, I'm not gonna get into the details of that, sir, but how, however, we have a lot of equipment, a lot of um, um, highly trained uh, personnel to search this property. All right. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your time.